Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another fun-filled video for you. And today I thought I would do just an update on my South African knife collection because some changes have happened. Uh, I have done updates before, but unfortunately I didn't remember the names. I have since remedied that. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually cheating as I do this video because I've got all the uh, actual placards from the Blade Gallery. I do not have... I did not get all my knives from the Blade Gallery, so not all my knives have this uh sort of um a certificate or their version of a certificate of authenticity uh it also has on some of them there there isn't even an actual certificate of authenticity so this kind of um makes up for it but i do have it for a lot of the knives so let's go ahead and get into this uh i'm going to go ahead and tell you all the knives that i own this is going to be part one of my south african knife collection uh, and again it's just an update because there have been some changes to my collection and i will point the knife that you know those knives that have been added to my collection as i go so let's go ahead and start with this knife here this knife is made by john arnold uh the name of this knife is called the simba tactical interframe front flipper uh with black g10 carbon fiber and moon glow backspacer so let's just take a quick look at this piece so we have the marble carbon fiber inlays on there Uh, this outside portion here is all G10, so it's actually two pieces, believe it or not. So this is marble carbon fiber, and this is G10 surrounding it. As you can see, it's like a different color. I'm also going gloveless today, guys. I don't really need the gloves today. They're, my hands are a little bit better than they usually are. So we've got a uh, Damascus blade on this knife with a Warncliffe style blade or... Um, Modified one clip style, that's what I want to say. It's a modified one clip style blade. Uh, the back spacer, it's called a moon glow back spacer. It's, it's made with G10 and then it's got these uh, glow in the dark uh, dots on there. I'm not going to show that to you, but yeah, the knife will glow in the dark. It's one of uh, John Arnold's signature on there. Uh, we've got titanium, blue titanium liner, so it really looks fantastic. Uh, with a blue anodized clip really very nice love it um it's also got a lot of heft for your hand so it feels fantastic in your hand when you're using it uh yeah this knife has already been used quite lightly not heavily but quite lightly the next one is the is a custom made in boo boo uh made for me by des horn um there's a long story as to how this knife was made and if you want to check out that video it's on my channel uh but yeah this is a custom made in boo boo this one has blue and orange g10 it's supposed to be my pandemic night uh the blue represents the uh the virus and then the orange represents a hope that we would find a cure which or a vaccine which obviously has already happened uh so yeah we've got uh marble carbon fiber and uh the inlays are g10 so really very pretty we've got uh his standard uh pocket clip because you know this one doesn't like pocket clips plus we've got the uh this uh twist feature file work on the back there that's also done by hand by desworn with a carbon fiber back spacer uh, the knife runs on ceramic ball bearings, and it's the only Mvubu ever made with ball bearings. Supposedly, I'm going to say supposedly, because uh, he may have made another one. I mean, you know, the one-of-a-kind thing, I don't know. You know, I just don't know. Uh, but he has said that this is a one-of-a-kind, that he has never made another one like it. So technically, this, this is the only one of its kind. You should not see another one like it ever again probably see a similar one um, but hopefully you won't see one that looks like it on to the next knife this is the uh, slim flip front flipper with C-Tech and Dama steel now if you guys don't know what C-Tech is C-Tech is a combination of aluminum and resin and other materials uh, sort of molded to create a handle which would be the bottom portion of this knife and then we've got the Damascus bolsters on there. The screws are custom made. These are scale screws. Custom made. 
by this horn. Really very pretty. Again, his standard pocket clip. He's not a pocket clip guy, but if you request a pocket clip, this is what you're going to get. You know, if you want a custom pocket clip, you could always go to uh, Adam Purvis on Instagram. He makes uh, pocket clips for just about any knife. The knife also has, again, the file work with the twist feature, which is also Death's Horn's signature. As you can see, the C-Tech, uh, it's got this beautiful sort of like copper uh, and black kind of mixed in together there. We've got a carbon fiber backspacer. The knife runs on ceramic ball bearings. Uh, this knife can be flipped two ways. You can flip it with your index finger with this little nub that sticks out at the top. You can flip it with your index finger that way, which is probably the most preferable way to do it. Or you can also use your thumb uh, by pressing your thumb up against this section of the knife. Right there, you can just go ahead and do that, and the knife will pop right open. Uh, again, the knife runs on Nitrobe 77 steel, which is a very, very exclusive steel. Uh, mostly, you'll see it in South Africa. It's popped up here in America, but not, not a lot. It's very rare here in the United States. Uh, it's also a very difficult steel to work with. Uh, only the most experienced knife makers will actually deal with Nitro 77 because the knife goes through a rigorous heat treatment process and then it is dipped in liquid nitrogen four times to give it strength. Basically it pretty much retains probably the same characteristics as M390. Uh, I, I think I've heard a lot of people say it's actually better than M390 in a lot of uh, a lot of ways. So Nitro 77 really super fantastic steel. The next knife on the list is made by a Rucus Blumeris, and the name of this knife is called the LL15 uh, Front Flipper. Oh, not Front Flipper. LL15 Flipper with Marble Carbon Fiber, Damascus and Titanium Damascus Backspacer, and it runs on ceramic ball bearings. This is the only full dress piece in my knife collection currently. I hope to have some more. I don't know, maybe... But for right now, this is the only one that I have. So a full dress piece means that every part of the knife actually has some sort of art on it. And the Damascus blade counts as art. Uh, if you look on the back, he's got this incredible uh, sort of rope file work. There's the Damascus backspacer right there. It's just an overall beautiful, beautiful knife. The combination of this blue Damascus with the black marble carbon fiber really, really makes it just absolutely elegant. This is one of those wear with a tuxedo knives, you know what I mean? And you got a beautiful blue titanium pocket clip with a ball. Really fantastic knife. The next one does not have a placard to it, uh, you know, which is one of these, you know, doesn't have one of these to it. Uh, but this is a custom made, uh, I'm going to say it's an L38 front flipper. By Andre Thorburn. This is actually the very first custom, true custom knife I ever purchased. Um, it was made for me by Andre Thorburn. The Eagle was made by uh, Marjorie Thorburn, his wife. They're a team. Uh, and the bottom half of the knife has got uh, white Westinghouse uh, scales. If you're not familiar with white Westinghouse, it's basically the same material that uh, is inside the 1930s. 40s and 50s General Electric refrigerators. That's this material here. It's used quite a bit in South Africa. Uh, one of the things that I love about this knife that makes it so unique is that it actually, the brown here uh, and the whole entire scale actually mimics uh, the beak of a bird. So technically, it looks like a bird slammed onto my knife here and it is just absolutely gorgeous the knife runs on ceramic ball bearings uh it is a huge sucker definitely one of my favorites in my collection uh i've kind of treated this like a safe queen but not really i've actually used this knife a couple of times already but it's just such a gorgeous gorgeous piece that i, I just love it so much we've got a silver uh pocket clip there G10 backspacer, and again, the file work. All the file work is done by hand. By hand, so 
takes him a while to do that. Really beautiful. Uh, yeah, again, the backspacer is G10. One of my most prized knives, and this has been showcased quite a bit on Instagram. In fact, everybody knows me on Instagram because of this knife by Andre Thorburn. So let's go ahead and get into the next uh, knife. The next one is, again, by John Arnold. He actually shows up in my knife collection three times, hoping to have him in my collection four times. I'm kind of hoping. There's still one more I want to get from this guy. He really makes fantastic knives. Uh, so the name of this knife is called the Grizzly Tactical Interframe Front Flipper with G10 and Amboynia Wood Burl. So uh, the whole scale is G10, and then he popped in these Amboynia Wood Burl inlays into the knife. Really quite stunning. Uh, it's the inlays, because, you know, G10 is pretty much a boring material but when you when you create it in a way where you're going to put inlays into it it's almost like it dresses up the g10 and makes the g10 you know sort of like an official material again i never really consider g10 you know custom material on an knife i've always considered it like a filler so really great the steel is m390 m390 is going to be a steel that is most in my collection uh because it's a safe choice i mean you know if i didn't want to get damascus or something you know strange like dragon damascus steel or something wild maki i always went with with m390 it's just a safer choice so the next one is sort of a controversial knife for me <laughs> i i've been posting this particular knife on instagram almost every week uh, I think it's safe to say it's probably my favorite knife in my collection. I hate to admit that because I love all the knives in my collection. But the way this knife uh, makes me feel as, as far as carrying it, uh, it, it's, it technically has become my favorite. I'll explain why. So this is made by Des Horn. Uh, this is the, this is the uh, Des Horn Imbubu as he intended to make it. Uh, these two, as you know, they're both the same model right which is what makes custom knives so great uh this one runs on ball bearings ceramic ball bearings this one just runs on washers now i'm going to show you why it's my favorite knife uh let's just let me just show you all right because i want to go back to the other knife so this one is on ceramic ball bearings right uh as you can see if i tip it over it falls shut right completely now this knife doesn't doesn't fall shut quite so quickly but there's something about this knife, which is why it's my favorite. There's no ball bearings on this one. <laughs> it's just washers. I believe it's brass washers. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Deshorn told me he uses brass washers as opposed to uh, phosphor bronze washers, which is what most people use. Um, I don't know if that attributes to such smooth action, but I mean, look at that that's insane there are no ball bearings on this knife uh this is electric blue carbon fiber again with the uh file work with the twist on it and carbon fiber backspacer again nitrobe 77 steel i love that steel this knife has been used quite often uh, I wipe it down every time I use it. I mean, I really wipe the hell out of it, so it looks brand new every time I use it. But it is the knife that winds up in my pocket uh, most of the time. Deshorn Mbubu. On to the next knife is another Deshorn uh, Mbubu. I'm actually thinking about selling this one. Uh, this is the um, Deshorn Slim Bubu. This is a slimmer version of this knife. Uh, it's all G10 with a twist. So basically, he took your basic G10 scale and um, machine put this machine twist on it, all all up and down the knife. It's really very nice, but again, you know, G10 is not really a a, a material that I find all that appealing. It's got a pocket clip on it. His, the same pocket clip on all of his knives, like I said. You know, they're all the same. There's no difference. Uh, he, he's just not a pocket clip guy. Uh, this knife also runs on washers. Uh, it's a very light knife. Really fantastic piece. 
But yeah, like I said, I'm going to think about selling it. So the next knife on the list is a huge sucker. Uh, this one's quite rare, and this is actually on sale on eBay right now if you're interested in this knife. Uh, you know, if you want to get a good look at this knife, here you go. Because, uh, yeah, I'm selling it. Uh, and it's actually kind of hard for me to consider selling it because uh, Andre Van Heer, uh, Andre um, Van Heerden is mostly known with his collaborative work. Uh, with Andre Thorburn and his A2 knives, uh, and he also works with Tashi Barucha and quite a few other knife makers that kind of escape my mind at the moment. This is a uh, this is called the M38 uh, flipper with G10 black G10. So there's nothing too fancy about it. It's got this sort of uh, machine um, design on it. Looks kind of like a spider web going on around it. The steel on it is M390. It runs on ball bearings, steel ball bearings. Quite smooth, as you can see. Yeah, Andre Thorburn doesn't do very many solo knives. This is one of them. Which makes it kind of hard for me to sell because if I got rid of it, uh, I don't know when I'll see another solo Andre Van Heerden knife ever again. So, you know, but for now, yeah, I'm selling it. I, I think it's, it's time for it to go. If I'm not using it or I'm not carrying it, then it's going to have to go. The next piece on my collection is the M44 Righteous uh, Interframe uh, with carbon fiber and snake wood inlay. So, uh, one of the most amazing things about a lot of custom knives when they do inlays, because uh, production knives do inlays as well, but what makes custom knife makers, particularly so, uh, knife makers in South Africa, so special is that. You run your finger across this knife. It's two pieces, okay? Uh, if you take a look, like this here is all carbon fiber around it, right? And then there's like an, supposedly it's an inlay. That's what I thought. But as it turns out, apparently this is all one piece. And I don't know how the hell he does that. Uh, Tashi Barucha is the designer of the handle. He's a French designer who also makes knives. It's just absolutely stunning. The steel on this knife is CTS XHP. I do love the gold color liners as opposed to blue or silver. And then we have a zirconium pocket clip. Really very pretty. Really tight on there too with the pocket clip. It's like super, super tight. The um, back spacer is G10. I'm sorry, is it G10? Yes, it's G10. I thought it was carbon fiber. No, it's G10. G10 backspacer on that. Runs on ceramic ball bearings. Very, very smooth. Andre Van, Andre Van Heerden and uh, Tashi Barucha is the designer of that handle. And on to my next knife. Coming to an end here, part one. I know it kind of slowed down again. I'm trying to make these things go faster, but, you know, give me a break. You know, they're custom knives. Uh, this one is made, is called the Dakar Flipper, and it's made by um, Trevor Berger. So this is called the Dakar Flipper with silver stripe carbon fiber and titanium blue liners. Really great knife. This is sort of like a fancy version of a ZT. Like if ZT were to make a custom knife, this is probably what it would look like. <laughs> Um, yeah, that, that silver stripe carbon fiber is really quite stunning. And the blue combination of the blue. Steel on this knife is uh, M390. Very, very smooth, soft action on this. I mean, look at this. It's got a soft detent. Uh, Trevor Burger is known for soft detents. There's not a lot of resistance. On his knives, when you pull the flipper, it's almost like you could blow on it and it would open. Uh, I'm not going to do it on camera, but yeah, this knife will open with inertia if you give it like a, a good quick flick. I don't know if I can. Nope, I don't want to do it. <laughs> not going to do that. So, I might hit the camera. Uh, we have a titanium um, pocket clip on there. The back spacer, again, that is uh, G10 for the back spacer. The next knife is very, very special. 
this is made by Clyde Chalinor. Um, Clyde Chalinor uh, was away for a while. He came back this year and has decided to continue his knife making uh, venture. Thank God. Uh, this one is very, very special. This is a one-of-a-kind, uh, one-of-a-kind uh, front flipper by uh, Clyde Chalnor. It's called the Viper. Uh, we've got Damascus. Uh, the steel on this is Damascus. Uh, the carbon fiber inlay on this, this is the only one out there in existence, and I know that for sure because I've talked with uh, Clyde Chalner. He's told me he's never going to make the inlays like it again. Um, and I've done a, I've done a video on this knife already, uh, but the inlay will not look like this on your knife if you decide to uh, order one from Clyde Chalner. I believe his books are closed at the moment. But if you order a knife from uh, Clyde Chalinor, uh, you're not going to get this design where it goes right around the pivot like that. You're going to get what's you're going to get a, an inlay that's more of a coffin shape and in the center. Uh, this was the original way that he was going to do all of his knives, but he began to realize that it was a pain in the ass to do it this way, where it goes around the standoff there. He just said he can't do that. In, in mass production it's just too time consuming so he decided to make this one a one of a kind for me underneath the pocket clip it actually says zero one on it and it's the only one you're ever going to see like this uh it's all titanium frame lock and this is also the only uh, only one of two frame locks in my collection uh again clyde chalmer there's no guy I know that has more pride in making a knife than this guy. Uh, he's got the uh, action on this tuned in real smooth. It runs on ball bearings. IKBS. Clyde Chalmore, yeah. The next knife on the table uh, that we're going to take a look at is called the EDCTI with Natural Canvas Micarta. Uh, it's got an M390 blade, and the knife is made by Willem Steenkamp. Willem Steenkamp is a very, very uh, elegant knife maker. All of his knives are just absolutely stunning in the way that they look. They're not very rustic looking. Uh, almost all of his knives can be like worn with a suit. Um, just very classy. Classy, classic looking knives. Uh, that's what draws me to his designs, is just how classy his knives are. And they're, they're mostly the, the correct size for an EDC. Um, but he really makes up for it in design. Uh, so it's natural micarta, brown micarta uh, canvas all around, including the uh, backspacer right there. Absolutely stunning on that. All the gold liners on it. Uh, he finishes it off with a nice, beautiful gold pivot ring surrounding the uh, silver pivot. Really, really nice um, touch there. And then, of course, he fit, again, with the pocket clip matching the pivot ring. Just really, really spectacular. Again, runs on IKBS, ball bearing system. Steel ball bearings. Uh, this next one, again, this one is supposedly is a one-of-a-kind handmade piece. Uh, by his brother, um, this is uh, Willem Steenkamp, and uh, this one is made by his brother, Kosi. Kosi is his older brother, uh, and he was actually introduced, Kosi Steenkamp was actually introduced to night making by his younger brother, Willem Steenkamp. As you can see, totally different styles, right? Uh, his brother is, is just as classy, but he goes a little bit more in the rustic style. Like, you, you could wear this with jeans, you could wear this with a suit. He doesn't, he doesn't particularly, uh, have, you know, a defining style. It's just, he just does really great work all together. So what we have here is red, uh, carbon fiber bolster with white Westinghouse pivot ring and white Westinghouse micarta i'm sorry white westing house yeah white westing house micarta on there so uh we've got a red carbon fiber uh backspacer 
and I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, you guys can probably see that. If you look inside, the backspacer has got these bits of gold in there. It's just absolutely stunning the way he does that. Look at that. The little gold sparkles in there. Really very pretty. I love that look. The blade steel is M390. A very accessible front flipper. I love the way that it's sort of squared off. Uh, it's, it's almost like this design for a front flipper was made so that anybody can figure out how to flip it. Um, you can also do it with like your index finger. It's not as comfortable, but you can do that. Kosi Steam Cam. And by the way, the name of this knife is called the Samsung Front Flipper. And finally, we come down to the final knife in part one of my collection. <laughs> I've let this damn thing run 25 minutes long, but look how many knives are on the table. Um, the final one is made by uh, J.D. Van Deventer. Now, I've got two knives from this guy that are currently in repair. Uh, they're currently in South Africa. Hopefully, he'll be shipping them to me soon. Uh, and then I'll do another update because those two knives will be returning. Uh, but in the meantime, this knife is called the Gold Midi Flipper with blue twill and marble carbon fiber. I love marble carbon fiber. It's like my favorite uh, carbon fiber material. I love it much more than the lightning strike carbon fiber. It's just a much more stunning look. We have a zirconium pocket clip. Uh, I also love the melding of the blue twill carbon fiber and the marble carbon fiber together. Uh, really not sure how he does that. Yeah, I don't know how he does that. We've got blue... Uh, titanium liners and a G10 backspacer on this. Really interesting flipper. It's not a front flipper. Uh, I guess you could call this a forward flipper uh, where it's not like your traditional uh, flipper that sort of sticks out like this like on the Trevor Berger piece. This is what you're all used to seeing when it comes to a flipper. This one is sort of like a they kind of cut it off or round off the edges and instead of you flipping the knife here on the side you know where you pull it from the side like that uh on a forward flipper it's designed so that it looks like a front flipper even though it's not call it a forward flipper where they cut out that piece that sticks out and they just make it up here on the top uh and it works just as easy the knife runs on regular ball bearings and this thing is drop shut smooth on regular ball bearings Made by J.D. Van Deventer. We also have, I don't know if I mentioned that, but you do have a zirconium pocket clip. Really very pretty. So, there you have it. Part one of my uh, South African knife collection. I will be back with part two. Um, tomorrow, we'll be doing part two of this video, and you'll see the second half of my knife collection. Uh, it was... It's always a lot of fun to share this collection with everybody. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, these are 15 of the large uh, South African custom knives that I own in my collection. Keep in mind, it's really 17. There are two more that are in repair. So again, I'll be doing another update. In the meantime, this is Omar, the Knife Shark Guy. Hoping you've enjoyed this quick view of my uh, part one of my South African knife collection. Maybe it's inspired you to get your first knife. A custom knife from uh, South Africa, if it has, I hope it has. Love to share that with you. And I also want to find out what you might have gotten. Uh, so I'll see you guys tomorrow in part two of this video. Uh, in the meantime, happy knife hunting, guys, and have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you later.